In the beginning, a profound stillness enveloped the cosmos, an endless void pregnant with potential. The Creator, in His infinite wisdom, set forth to craft the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless, an abyss cloaked in darkness. Above the deep, the Spirit of the Creator hovered, a quiet promise of the wonders to come. Let there be light, the Creator commanded. In an instant, light burst forth, shattering the darkness. The Creator saw the light and deemed it good, separating it from the darkness. The light he called day and the darkness he called night thus. The first day unfolded. On the second day, the Creator spoke again. Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. And so a vast expanse materialized, dividing the waters below from the waters above. This expanse he named sky. With the third dawn, the Creator gathered the waters below the sky into one place, revealing dry ground. Let the dry ground appear, he said, and it was so. The dry ground he named land, and the gathered waters he called seas. Seeing that it was good, he commanded the land to sprout vegetation plants bearing seeds and trees bearing fruit. The land flourished with greenery, each plant and tree reproducing according to its kind. On the fourth day, the Creator declared, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. He crafted two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also adorned the sky with countless stars. These celestial bodies he set in the sky to give light to the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. As the fifth day dawned, the Creator turned his attention to the waters and the sky. Let the waters teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the vault of the sky he commanded. Thus the sea swarmed with a multitude of living beings, and the sky was filled with the fluttering of wings. The Creator blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. On the sixth day, the Creator called forth the land to produce living creatures' livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. He saw that it was good and then proclaimed, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So the Creator fashioned mankind in His own image, both male and female, blessing them with dominion over all the earth. Be fruitful and increase in number, He instructed them. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground He provided every seed-bearing plant and every tree that has fruit with seed for food to sustain them and all the creatures of the earth. As the sixth day came to a close, the Creator observed all that He had made, and it was very good. Evening gave way to morning, bringing the sixth day to an end. The heavens and the earth were now complete, their splendor a testament to the Creator's boundless creativity. On the seventh day, the Creator rested from all His work. He blessed the seventh day and made it holy, for on it He ceased from all the creating that He had done. Thus concludes the grand saga of the heavens and the earth in their pristine glory, brought to life by the hand of the Creator.